Welcome to the Embracing Brokenness podcast, where our goal is to engage with all of those willing to venture deeper into their transformational journey with Christ. Here's your host and co-founder of Embracing Brokenness Ministries, Steve Adams. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Embracing Brokenness podcast. Thanks, Stephanie, again for that intro. Uh, I, we're going to take a clip from a teaching we did recently, and the topic for today is identity matters. Now, that's kind of a double entendre, right? So there's identity that matters, and there is identity matters. Does that make sense? We are born into a world that war, and Satan does everything he can to move us away from the intended journey that God has appointed for us. As first non-believers, we have to make a choice to follow him. When we do, that plan, after forgiveness and repentance from our sin, that plan begins to unfold. God will show us a direction for our lives. It may take longer for some of us than others, and it is a process. So a big portion of what we do in Embracing Brokenness Ministries is for others to begin at least a journey of recognizing their brokenness and how God wants to heal them in the process of this purpose-filled life that he has given us. So we want to introduce to you the content of material that we teach on on a regular basis. So uh, it's a course that we created, Colleen and I created it, around this topic of identity, and we teach it, we talk about it, we live it as best we can in our lives every day, but it is something that we take on as a, as a topic in many of our classes that we do together, and not only at a mission where she works, but also online and other places, and I thought, you know, this is going to be an important part of our ministry and is and has been but will be even moving forward because we want to record this content in video form audio form make it available for people to take a deeper dive and we do it over an eight week period of 90 minutes at a time so there's going to be a, an opportunity for us to put together a whole series that we can make available to you and to anyone interested in going deeper into this question of identity and so i thought at least for just a short segment of time on today's podcast, I would introduce you to the premise behind Identity Matters, but it's not just me introducing it. I'm just giving you the intro to the intro. But Colleen has uh, so graciously, as she does most of the time, teaches a portion of this on our first time together with our guests and students and people that want to learn this material in a deeper way. And so what we did, we just took about, I don't know, maybe about a 10 minute segment of a recent teaching, introducing the staff at a, at a organization where, where we are presenting this to Identity Matters. So I'm going to play that for you now and allow you to process that a little bit. And please do give us some feedback, uh, comments, questions. You can find us all over social media. So just Google Embracing Brokenness Ministries or, my goodness, you can go to our website and there's links to everything. Uh, we are very free with content. We want to continue to be that way because God's called us to challenge everybody in their identity to live it out in a deeper and more meaningful way through an intimate relationship with Him. So there we start and here i will by turning it over to colleen and my hope is that this will be very meaningful to you let me just give you kind of a high level what um identity matters is really about identity so you know it's about the matters of identity and it's that identity matters um and you're going to see, we're going to go through some things more quickly that will actually be reinforced over the weeks to come. So you'll hear drill down on certain concepts. But to give you a high level overview, um, I think what we found in our own personal lives was not having a solid identity, um, an identity built on our false self, you know, the poser, the fig leaf person created a lot of issues. Um, in our journeys and you know we didn't necessarily know how to address the personal things that had hurt us and brokenness 
um, as the path to really understanding who God is. And so we had a lot of distortions um, in who God is. And I think that's, I've never met anyone that there are not distortions because of their experience, you know, and people not having a mindset of how do I put some of those things under the cross so that I can be free of them. And so for me, I had a very distorted image of God. It took a while. I loved Jesus. When I really got down to it, I didn't even like God. Um, I would tell you, because I was a good Christian, that I love everybody and I really love God and Jesus loves me, all of that. But at a heartfelt level, I did not really understand all the big questions that you hear. And, and if you're, I love to study apologetics, so I'd give you the good theological answers to suffering and all kinds of things. But there were things that existed in my life that God sat there and watched, and I just didn't see that as a kind, loving father. And I didn't know that until I started to heal and understand the consequences of some of the things that happened. And then I had to take a different lens and go back and reinterpret who God really is. And so that took years to, to just go, okay, where's the distortion? Let me see it. Where's the distortion? Let me see it. And, um, and honestly, I didn't really know who I was. I had rejected major parts of myself um, that had been traumatized. And so, you know, and I think we see that kind of fragmentation. You'll understand it more as I share more of my story. But, you know, I realized as God started to heal, I, I integrated. Like, big Colleen loved the little Colleen that was inside of her that sometimes threw tantrums, even in my adult body. Like, there was a place that I was stagnated because of the trauma and the hurts and and so even though that little girl was so pure she was my true self it was who god really wanted those aspects of me to be available for the purpose that he had for me i shoved them hid them because i believe they created the sexual abuse i endured yada 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 and so i became pretty fragmented now i did all the counseling for the sexual abuse and all that kind of thing and didn't understand that, you know, thought I had put a lot of things behind me, but there was still this little girl in a lot of ways that was driving, you know, um, some dysfunction in my life. And so, you know, I realized that without truly knowing God and being safe in God's presence, there could never be the true self-definition of me. And I would continue to try to meet my own needs, and I would hide behind fig leaves because if I was vulnerable with all of you, you weren't going to like me. You were going to abuse me. Something bad was going to happen. And so I built all those walls. And, you know, and, and then from that, you know, this relationship with God and self, you know, identity is birthed out of who God says we are. And we love to sing all the songs at church, right? Like we've got some really good ones about who God says we are. Believing it at a heart level is a very different thing. And some of you know, you, you know, you sing, you say, and it's so beautiful. And some of you sat in that quiet moment and went, does God really love me that way? Is that really true? You know, and so we say a lot of things, but unless it is felt in the heart, we can really, really struggle in Christian identity. Um, so you're going to see we are going to have a focus on who is God. And we're going to introduce you to some ways of experiencing God um, not just in your head, but in your heart, starting to build capacity, you know, and some of you may be doing a lot of this already, but just really building the capacity because the game changer for me was when I felt like I prayed for two years, Jesus, if I could really have a real intimate relationship with you, I want you to show up and have coffee with me like I do with my girlfriends. Because if I have coffee with my girlfriends, it's the most intimate time where we share and I, I want it to be like that. You know, and people talk about things like that. I think they're a little crazy. So I don't know where they go with that. So I don't necessarily want to look like that. But I want that. And so I prayed because I was like, you know, I've been a Christian, you know, since I was little. But there has to be so much more. There has to be that kind of personal relationship. And I will tell you the game changer. After two years, I don't know that he physically showed up and had coffee. But I walk constantly with an awareness of the presence and I'm asking them all the time like what is that what do you want me to do and it has right-sized obedience I still su suffer constantly from my own self-deceit and wanting my own way so God doesn't always win but it, it is just a different way of being in the world and I think 
it only comes when you really wrestle you know, with true self-identity, which is linked, honestly, to the purpose. He planted you in your mother's womb, picked your mother, picked the time, knew you were going to be sitting in this classroom. You know, he was so intentional, and that purpose is linked to your true self. Your false self cannot go accomplish what God has ordained for you. And so I find this journey to be very important. Um, and so we explore God, we explore man. You know, isn't it interesting, the first three books of the Bible, Genesis 1 through 3, honestly, if we would just spend time every year going through them, through them, through them, they tell you the whole story of the Bible, including telling you in Genesis 3 that Jesus needs to come and telling you he's coming, right? So we see everything we need to know. And then we watch man, you know, in the Old Testament, not till Jesus' time, not being able to fulfill things and all kinds of brokenness. You know, and we see the disciples, there's some pretty crazy characters too that remind me almost all of them of myself. And, you know, but the reality is we have these three books of the Bible that are so important that I wonder why in church over time, you know, I've heard the creation story as a little child, but like we haven't really focused. What did it really mean when we bit that fruit? Like, what did it mean for us? What did it mean for our physical body? You know, we know so much from a scientific standpoint about how our bodies function. You know, what did it do? And quite frankly, what are the ways, what is the, the antidote for the things that broke us? I mean, the antidote is obviously Jesus, but there's a transformational journey to reverse so much of what has occurred. And the Bible talks very clearly you know, about that journey that we need to be doing. It doesn't say, Jesus, yes, my ticket to heaven. It says, Jesus, and he died to transform my life into Christ-likeness, right? Um, I would contend that the church has totally lost the path of suffering as the way to uh, Christ-likeness. And, you know, we avoid, especially the American church, like, you can't bring up I'm suffering, this is horrible. It's like there is joy in suffering because that is the path. Pick up your cross and follow me. And so, you know, understanding consequences of the fall and even the gift that we have in Jesus becomes really important as we move into, you know, the restore. Um, and then, you know, the other big part of this, we're going to talk about healing journey um, and just our view of how people heal it links into the three pieces of artwork that hang you know, in the Access Center. You have copies of them. Eventually, they'll be in all of our classrooms. Um, the Tree of Brokenness was a way that I originally, when we started the new program, I would explain to staff, and I would do it with like the stick tree, and I would say, guys, you know, we need to move away from you know, these bad sins and these good sins. That We all are controlled by things where we're not getting you know, our, uh, our needs met from God, like we did in the garden. We clearly see these needs were met. These needs are important to us. God wants us to get them met through him. We start trying to meet them through other things. I mean, that's one of the consequences of the fall. And so um, the tree of restoration, you know, we'll talk about is that's the fruit of the spirit. How many people try to manifest the fruit of the spirit without actually even knowing how to plug into the vine? And, you know, so we fake it which is really ugly when we fake the fruit of the Spirit, because quite frankly, the fruit of the Spirit, in my opinion, is plugging into the vine, and it's Jesus' Spirit pouring through you. It's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to the entire world. And if we don't even know how to plug in, we as a church are faking. You know, they're, they're synthetic, not real manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and when you're feeling like I'm a poser even about those things, I think there's major brokenness that comes from it. Um, and it's just a di difficult journey. So understanding what is the path of healing. Now, guys, I've been doing you know, this journey. I think it's been 18 years now from a time I learned kind of a different way of, of exploration. And, right, and there are still things that God is so gracious in bringing up slowly that I need to heal from. And there are indicators that I have not healed. And so we're going to talk to, what does it look like for you to even know you have an issue and be able to say, wow, I need to press into that to understand, you know, what's going on with that behavior um, and be able to press into God for the answers and the healing that you need. Okay. So that's kind of what the journey looks like. 
Um, you are not gonna walk out of here with more than a journey that you can choose to engage or not. Most of you are on the journey and so pieces are in place. Um, you just may have a different way to think about your brokenness um, and, and that would be the goal of how are you really can, can be free and walk in freedom and not be afraid to be authentic and vulnerable with people. This was another episode of the Embracing Brokenness podcast. For more information on Embracing Brokenness Ministries or to subscribe to our blog, podcast, YouTube channel, or engage with us on social media, please visit our website at embracingbrokenness.org. Thanks for joining us.